Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today in our episode of Your Dystopian Future, we are going to be discussing a car where you cannot replace the front motor with a motor off the shelf. You cannot replace the front motor with a motor from the manufacturer that you order. You can only replace the motor with a motor that was custom manufactured for your vehicle's VIN number. I wish I could say I was talking about Apple or Tesla, because at least then we could say that this types of repair practices have been quarantined to just a few companies. Unfortunately, it's not. As I mentioned on this channel on a regular basis, this stuff is spreading everywhere. And today we're going to be talking about it on the Volkswagen ID4. This comes from the channel Unrequited ID4 Love. This person has a Volkswagen ID4. He is a giant Volkswagen ID4 and Volkswagen in general fanboy, and he loves his car. In spite of the fact that he loves his car, it doesn't seem like his car or his vendor loves him back. So one day, he got this message saying, electrical system not working properly. And I will let him explain what it is that went on with the car after he got that error message numerous times and took it to the dealer. Times that it happened, we decided that we should take it into the Volkswagen dealer to have it checked out. And that's where our problem started. The dealer traced the problem to the front motor, which they said was defective and had to be replaced. That sounded a little worrying, but they said the motor was going to be there the next week. The next week, they said it would take another week and then another week. And after a month, they finally told us what the problem was. The motor had to be custom manufactured to our vehicle identification number in Germany. That surprised us because like you, we learned in seventh grade about the invention of interchangeable parts in the 18th century. And we'd assumed that Volkswagen had caught on to the trend by now. Burn burn but a well-deserved one so let's go over this and let's dig into the possibilities here i am going to be speculating here because i do not work for volkswagen there are numerous things that could be going on here behind door number one they have created a device that does not have the tuning ability that i have on my 300 dollars e-bike controller now there are people who are going to say things like well the motor has to be the OEM motor. If it's not the OEM motor, it's not going to work because it's specifically tuned for these parameters and it needs to be built to these specifications. We're not talking about a motor coming from a third party. We're not talking about Lewis winding coils for his own motor in his garage. We're talking about the guy trying to get the motor from a Volkswagen dealer for a car that was purchased recently that is still in warranty and they cannot take a motor off the shelf at Volkswagen made for his car and put it in there. And apparently they don't have any sort of tuning mechanism to be able to take a motor off the shelf and put it in there with my $300 e-bike motor and $300 e-bike controller that you can buy in ebikes.ca, you get software like this, where it will figure out what the resistance of the stator, what the inductance of the stator and everything else is. It'll mess with the hall sensors to make sure it's spinning in the right direction and all that stuff. And once you're done, the motor controller is now tuned for your specific motor. Because I get it. I have three motors from the same company, same model on the shelf, they're gonna be made a little bit differently. The manufacturer tolerances are always gonna mean that there's a little bit of something off between this motor to that motor, which is why software like this exists on a $300 motor controller to be able to tune it so that you don't have to manufacture a motor to that specific effing VIN number, because that would be insane. So perhaps they simply don't have the tuning software available, or they just never thought of the fact that a motor may go out on their car. Behind door number two, this could have nothing to do with tuning whatsoever, and it could just be some pairing thing like what Apple does, where it doesn't matter that the that the screen or the battery is the exact same one and all the parameters are virtually the same. The serial number needs to be reprogrammed to that particular device. Again, this is not something that's supposed to take several weeks to do, but there could still be a case like that where this is not a tuning issue, it's just the serial number. Behind door number three, the dealer could just be absolutely and completely full of shit in spite of the fact that this gentleman has been a loyal Volkswagen customer who sings their praises on a regular basis for over seven years. Who knows? This is, in my opinion, completely and utterly unacceptable. You have to understand, if you're going to make the argument that this is important, that that motor be specifically manufactured for that specific VIN so that that car can be built to the same exact specifications and tolerances that it was designed for, that design and engineering are choices. It's not just like it was just designed that way because it came down from the heavens and God said, this is how this car should be. These are designed and engineered by humans, and design and engineering is a series of trade-offs based on reality, not just we are going to make things according to a specific ideal that is impossible to live up to. In my store, I'm confident that we would have a better rate for data recovery if my process were tuned to each data recovery costing $1 million and having a turnaround time of 5 to 10 years. 
However, since most customers want to pay a few hundred dollars for their data recovery and have a turnaround time max of a few weeks, I have to tailor my process to that. My process must be tailored so that we check these specific things, we go over everything this number of times, but we are probably going to miss a couple of data recoveries that would have been recoverable if I had a budget of 100K to a million dollars per recovery and a turnaround time of five years, because my customers expect the recovery to go 900 max and to be done in a few weeks, my process is not ideal. I have to trade off a few things. The same way over here, maybe, just maybe, you might have to create a couple of trade-offs so that you could use a piece of software like this to be able to tune or pair a new motor rather than creating a car in 2022 where the motor has to be custom manufactured in another country for your specific VIN number before that car can work again. That is a choice. Making something like this is a choice. Because people will say, well, if you don't like it, just don't buy it. Do they advertise this on their brochure? Does it say, by the way, if you get an error on your screen, you're going to have to wait for the home office in another country 5,000 miles away to custom manufacture a motor for your device because we can't use a spare part on the shelf as a result of how we've designed or engineered the product. This is insane. Your average person who wants to get into electric vehicles or your average person who wants to get into vehicles in general does not have several months to wait for a basic effing repair because this is the way you design the product. It doesn't make sense. And frankly speaking, this is going to turn people off to electric vehicles. I say this as an electric vehicle, electric bike, and electric scooter fanboy. Whether it's pre-built or something that I've put together myself, I love electric vehicles. I love going around and riding my e-bike and showing you how I put everything together and doing cool stuff with it. I think they're incredibly cool. I love tuning my own motor. I think this stuff is a lot of fun. That being said, if you try to tell somebody who's used to the 2005 Toyota Camry that, hey, if you buy an EV, by the way, not only is it going to cost $15,000 more than your current car, but if you have a problem with it, you're going to have to wait two months for the OEM to bring you a motor because it has to be to such tight, perfect OCD tolerances. And if it isn't perfect, then it's never going to work kind of bullshit. Then they're going to say, screw that and ask their mechanic to fix up their 2005 Camry so it continues to last for the next 10 years rather than ever entertain the idea of going green with an electric vehicle. This is a great way to turn people off to electric vehicles that I think, in my opinion, is completely avoidable and it doesn't make much sense to do so. Again, it is completely possible that in spite of this gentleman being a loyal customer of that dealer for over seven years, that they decided to lie to him and be completely full of shit and just make something up. And maybe that's what happened here. But the way that I've seen these conversations go, and with some of the conversations that I had when I went to the Soups conference where they said, well, the reason this may not be replaceable outside the manufacturer is it needs to be manufactured to these perfectly tight tolerances. I'm not going to say the name of the company or the person who I spoke to because I want to respect their privacy and anonymity based on the conversation they had with me that they probably shouldn't have had with me. But this was an actual argument being made, that this these uh, complaints that I have regarding right to repair are somewhat shallow and somewhat uninformed because you have no idea how tight the design tolerances and specifications are for these products where a product may have to be perfectly paired in order to work right. I would put forward the argument that if you are creating a $1 million Formula One racing car for a champion, maybe that makes sense. If you're creating a thirty dollars to $40,000 family SUV, no. You figure out how to make that shit work with something like this, where you can tune a motor that is off the shelf, manufactured for that vehicle, and put it in there so a customer doesn't have to go two months wondering, how am I going to pick up my groceries? How am I going to pick up my kids from school? How am I going to do errands or run my business? Do you think that I'm being unfair to Volkswagen here, or do you think Volkswagen is being unfair to this particular customer? One thing I will add before ending the video is if you watch his video, he talks about how much he loves Volkswagen, how he's loved his older vehicles, and even how he loves this one. So the fact that they have treated him in this manner, that they don't appear to be compensating him or even covering his gas or anything else as a result of this very, very long delay on a new vehicle, uh, I would be much more mad if I was him. Would you buy this model car from this company if you knew that this were the case going in? If it said on the brochure, by the way, one of the main parts of the car, the motor, must be custom manufactured for your particular VIN number, and it may take a couple of months for you to get it. Would that affect your decision to purchase that particular brand, make, and model of vehicle? Let me know in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video, and I really do apologize for not being able to say that this type of practice is not quarantined to Apple or Tesla. Bye now.
Denny Man. Don't tell, you're only supposed to have two on the plane. Hello. Which one's the second tell? There's three. You can pick. How do you not tell? That's Oreo, Oreo that's does. Clinton, and this is Barry. This is Clinton. Okay, never mind, this is Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought the man was coming from the left, but the right. Me too, that's why we paid for him to fly here. Hello. Hey, Clinton. Who's my boy? Who's my boy? You are so cute. He really went through it, but he made it. Yeah. You should have seen uh, the video of the, the, the Uber him, him crying. What was it like getting him into this thing to take him on the plane? He was second easiest. It was Oreo who just gave up and laid down immediately. That was your plane? That was no. Was it? Hey, or the one? one right behind us. No, that is it. Yeah, that is, is it. it. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Oreo. He's chilling out. Oreo is surprisingly the most calm. Yeah. Hello, Barry. He, he let out one meow. He one meow the whole trip. The whole trip. He was probably scared. Who meowed the most? Oh, he was oh. for sure scared. Oh, that was Clinton. He did the goblin meow. He's probably scared. Yeah. I have to take him home so we can poop. That's probably. And then in the car, um, when it was silent, one of them would meow, which would cause the other one to meow. And they would, they would like talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs>